Welcome to another episode of Tell Me About Your Damn Book. I'm your host, Stephen Lomer, and my guest this week, ladies and gentlemen, my guest this week, she is the hardest working woman in self-publishing today. Prove me wrong. She's also one of the most wildly talented romantic suspense authors around. Please, ladies and gentlemen, make her feel welcome. Satin Russell. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So I'm going to start with your bio. Uh, you were a financial advisor for many years up until you decided to pursue your dreams of becoming a writer back in April 2013. It took you a year of saving and planning before you were able to commit to your goal full time. Your debut novel, Secret Hunger, was published in April 2015. You live in Massachusetts and are married to the love of your life, a man who literally flew halfway around the world for you. Other than writing, you love reading, supporting fellow authors, especially self-published ones, traveling, and photography, and you're also partial to a good whiskey every now and then. So it's hard to imagine that there are people in the world who don't know you at this point. <laughs> But for those who don't, let's set the table for them. Where were you born? I was born in Orlando, Florida. Okay. Did you stay in Orlando? I don't remember it. Actually, we <laughs> moved to Connecticut, Massachusetts area okay. uh, when I was quite a bit younger. And then third grade, moved to Colorado, spent the majority of my childhood in Colorado. Okay. And then met Terry in Seattle, lived in Seattle for eight years have actually lived in Maui for a year and then moved back to the East Coast. So I've been kind of as far west and as far east as you can get in okay. the country. All right, nice. You have a sister and a brother, mm -hmm. neither of whom are authors. Right. Uh, are there any other authors in the family? No. Interesting. My dad used to write a lot. I mean, like, my dad likes to write, but okay. he's not an author. Not okay. published. And write. Okay. So what drew you to writing in the first place? Reading. I've, I've been an avid reader since I can remember. I was the kid that was reading in the back of the classroom regardless of what subject we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I just love stories, and so and it was a way for me to escape if things were tough. I would, you know, mom would say, "Go play outside," and I'd be the one that was sitting under a tree reading. You mm -hmm. know, I was just that person that loved to read. So, okay. um, I always wanted to write. Um, it took me a while to kind of own that, but yeah, reading was the first thing. Okay. So, nice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, you are generally considered within our sphere to be a goddamn rock star. You, you're at every author event imaginable. You're always helping other authors. You're banging out your own words consistently. How do you do it? How do you have that kind of energy? I've always had a lot of energy. So how I use it, you know, whether I want to use it productively or destructively. <laughs> for good or for evil, sure, right? sure, yeah. Um, I've always been a real positive person. I like to cheerlead. I, I like to um, help my friends where I can. Um, that's always been something that is important to me anyway. Mm -hmm. And so if I think that I can help or if I can, you know, give some advice or if I can just, you know, repost something or share something, then, you know, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and I'm just blessed with a lot of energy, to be honest with you. Like, I, back when I was younger in my 20s, I'd be the last person dancing on the dance floor at <laughs> 8 in the morning in heels. You know, like, I was, I've just always I been that, that person. I can so. picture that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so now I use it in this way as opposed to that way. But, okay. Yeah. Nice. Okay. <laughs> All right. The tagline of your website, mm -hmm. satinrussell.com, is suspense that sizzles. Yes. What makes your suspense sizzle? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I love the romantic suspense genre because you do have a central love story and you are guaranteed a happily ever after. But there is that sense of danger and action that propels the plot forward. Mm -hmm. So it, for me, I like that combination um, within the genre itself, and I want to have that. I want I, if if there's going to be 
you know, I, I don't shy away from like the sex scenes, the love scenes. So that's the sizzle. But I want it to be realistic. I want it to be something where they've earned that moment. Mm -hmm. And um, and I like putting them through that sense of danger and earning their happily ever after. So okay. suspense and sizzles. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to my knowledge, you haven't had any short stories published anywhere. Mm -mm. Does that not interest you? It doesn't. Oh. It really doesn't. Even as a reader. Um, I don't like reading short stories. Really? I don't like reading novellas for the most part. I've always been one of those people that when I read a book, I want to fully immerse myself in that world, get to know and live with those characters, get to know and live in that environment. Mm -hmm. um, I love series for that same reason, where you can go back and you can revisit. And whether it's a series where it's following the same, you know, uh, couple or the same hero or heroine um, or if it's just kind of you're revisiting the world but in a different angle and and, and you know telling the story of a different character um, I just I like doing that so when I read it I find it a little dissatisfying I know that's kind of maybe taboo to say that because it's such a it's such a popular form mm -hmm. you know of writing now but um, I, I don't really have an interest in reading it so I don't really necessarily want to write it huh is there anything that could convince you to write a short? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm open. I am open to it in the sense, like, I think it would be really great practice. I've read how um, it it trains you as a writer to, like, cut away all of the fat and really get to the heart and the meat of the story. And sure. I certainly could use the practice. <laughs> so in that regard, yes, I uh -huh. want to say yes, but it's not... It's not where my heart lies, you okay. know. Like it's not, it's not something that I'm, I'm biting at the bit, looking forward to doing. I really want to finish my series, um, finish the third book, and then I am kind of playing around with the idea of writing a couple of short stories in between of side characters. So it's already sort of on the radar, okay. but it, I'm not focusing on it right now. Okay. So. Fair enough. Yeah. I won't pressure you. It's <laughs> fine. Now. Looking at my wife. Yes. Looking at your husband. Yes. It's very clear we both married up. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> How do you keep the women at bay when you bring your husband to these author fairs and the, these events? How, how do you keep them? <laughs> how do you keep them away? Is I, it a whip in a chair? Is you know, that? I, I don't. I let. I, I just kind of trust that he's gonna come home. <laughs> 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 I figure it's an ego boost to both of us. I, ha sure. I clearly have great taste. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, and, and, and then he can come home and feel really good about himself. So <laughs> I benefit. <laughs> it all it's works a win -win out. It's win-win as far as I'm concerned. Okay. So. <laughs> all right. Good. Good. Excellent answer. <laughs> Uh, I just found out recently that you're a gamer. I am a gamer. <laughs> How did video games come into your life? And are we, do we go all the way back to Super Nintendo or is this sort of like a more recent thing? Super Nintendo. Really? Yeah. All the way back? We were, we were, so growing up, it was kind of funny because um, my dad was actually fairly strict growing up mm -hmm. um, and that manifested itself in many ways but one of the ways was that we weren't allowed we weren't allowed to watch MTV and we didn't have video game consoles and we were like the last family you know within the group that had video games this sounds and like child abuse to me <laughs> right this is terrible so um, he surprised us one Easter gosh I was probably in like seventh grade or sixth grade something in that range okay. um, and the one big Easter present was a Nintendo. And Original we just Nintendo? Flipped. Yes. Wow. So Super Old Mario school. Brothers and like the whole bit and oh gosh, it wow. was all over from there. Yeah. Nice. Um and I and I've dabbled. I wouldn't say that I'm so hardcore now. I I've, I've actually had to make the conscious decision to pull back. But um, I, I was really into World of Warcraft for so many years. No kidding. I was, um, I was a guild leader. I was a holy pally, if anybody <laughs> wants to know. And um, I raided like five times a week. And I had a blog. I actually wrote a blog for a number of years. Wow. Mirrodin's Musings. Yeah, because I was on Mirrodin, the server. Uh -huh. So 
yeah, I got really into it for a long time. I still have friends that are gamers that I've kept in contact with, even though I stopped playing a couple years ago. Uh-huh. And, um, and, you know, so, yeah. Wow. My last game was Far Cry. Far, Far Cry. Cry. Far Cry 4. Okay. Yeah. So wow. That was the last um, game hole that I fell into. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what were some of your favorite games of all time? Um, well, Skyrim, Fallout, um, yeah, Far Cry, I actually really enjoyed Far Cry up until the, the ending, the ending was a little disappointing, but the gameplay was awesome, okay. so, anything by Bethesda, uh-huh. I really like Bethesda, and I like being able to, um, interact with my environment, mm-hmm. I like a big sand Sandbox, box. yeah. Um, but something that, I, and my favorite thing is to... Um, use my sniper rifle. Like I, I, I like sniping. <laughs> I like like silent approaches and then like picking them off. So, uh huh. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, so was there any Grand Theft Auto or Red Dead Redemption, anything like that? Um, I watched Red Dead Redemption when Terry was playing it. My okay. husband Terry, but yep. um, no, I didn't really. I didn't really. I played it a couple, a little bit, but I wasn't really. I didn't really get into that one. Um, Grand Theft Auto, I. I'm okay with it, like as far as like the violence aspect of it, but I don't really feel the need to like go around and like be grandmas or something like that. Sure, so I'm yeah, just like, sure. I'm... well, that's good to know. <laughs> Anything with a post-apocalyptic spin, though, like sandbox sniper type thing, I'm uh-huh. all over. I gotcha. love that stuff. So okay, yeah, all right, <laughs> cool. The uh, through line to your series is the Harper sisters. Mm-hmm. Did you draw on your relationship with your own sister to inform the relationships among the sisters? Yeah, definitely. And not just my sister, my brother too. I mean, I think siblings have a a really special relationship and um, there's something to be said about being able to talk to somebody who remembers all of the same stories that you do, good and bad. (laughs) Um, I remember growing up and when, when my sister, my brother and I would fight, my mom would say, you know, like, this is your best friend for life. And, you know, you should respect that and you should treat it with the honor that it deserves. And so um, I feel really lucky that she helped us be close. And even even as, a, as adults, you know, I cherish those relationships. My, my brother lives in Oregon, but I still ve- feel very close to him, even though I haven't lived near him for a long time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that relationship informed um, the story and the relationship between the sisters quite a bit. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we have a gimmick on this show that we are contractually obligated to live up to. So Satin Russell. Yes. Tell me about your damn book. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, Secret Need is the second book of the Harper Sisters series. Okay. Which is a romantic suspense trilogy set up in Bath, Maine. And it follows the story of Eliza Harper. She goes by Liz. Okay. She is a female mechanic who gets framed for drug trafficking and murder. And she has to go on the run, and she has to rely on her old high school bully, Alex Weston, to help clear her name. What a twist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have trust issues, Okay. you can imagine. Sure, sure. <laughs> you that know? makes perfect so, sense, yeah. Yeah, 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 it's a lot of fun. Okay, uh, and, uh, and, and what's next? Well, I'm working on the third book now, Okay. Um, which is the third sister, big surprise. Uh-huh. Um, her name is Fiona Harper. She's kind of having a quarter life crisis and um, she's, she's looking at her life. She's graduated um, college. She's moved back into her childhood home with her sister and um, the first relationship, so Olivia and Mason. Mm-hmm. She's in her childhood bedroom. She's working the, you know, she's waiting tables at the cafe that she had her high school job. And so she's kind of feeling like she needs to make a change. Um, so that book is going to be interesting. Um, she falls in love with a main game warden. <laughs> yeah. So <that's> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Who's in the process of, um, you know, trying to solve a, his own his own um, crime. So she kind of gets caught up in it. After that, I actually have um, a five book, minimum five book, potentially six book, uh, paranormal romance series that I want to do. <laughs> Is this exclusive? Are you are you announcing this exclusively here <laughs> on Tell Me About Your Damn Book? <laughs> it's been it's been in my head for a while, and I I don't know how exclusive in the sense like I don't think I've really talked to anybody about it, but then talk about it. Oh yeah, <laughs> by okay. all means, we have the scoop. Yay. This is great. <laughs> 
Um, it's it's a five book series, paranormal romance. Um, I don't have a whole lot of the details, but I want it to be based off of the five senses. So each protagonist has a special ability in relation to one of the senses, and they have to kind of come together to get rid of the big bad, whatever that ends up being. We'll find out. Wow. Um, it's on. It's very much on the back burner. I'm really trying to stay focused on this third book and be disciplined about it, but um, I. I've been getting all these ideas and I've been writing them down. So I'll look at my notes after this is done and, and kind of go from there. But that's the next that's the next big project. Wow. Okay. Yeah. We have a segment on the show mm -hmm. called Questions from the Great Unwashed. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and these are questions that have been submitted via social media for you. What? <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. Okay. It's always a mixed bag. I will present these questions to you. You can do whatever you like with them. But before we get into them, mm -hmm. I have to say that we normally get a handful of questions submitted and, and then I present them. Okay. For you, there were an enormous number of questions really? submitted. Yes. And they were all the same question. So all of you people, is that your real name? Is Satin Russell your real name? <laughs> is your real name Satin? Is Satin a pen name? I once knew a stripper in Portland named Satin Russell. Nobody cares, all right? Her name is Satin, all right? That answers like 50 of the questions that originally came in. Yes, yes. it's Satin Russell. Yes, yes that's, that's your that's actual name. name. Yes, I know that. Yeah. And these people, that's all they could think. We have a rock star author here, and all they could think to ask was, is that your real name? I get it a lot, actually. That doesn't surprise me all that much. Okay. Um, and uh, it just pissed me off so. <laughs> because we, we have you here. We, you, they can ask you anything. They can ask you absolutely anything about publishing, about writing, about you, about your life. And that's what they think to ask. That, okay, that's right. fine. Yeah, okay. It, so for the record, it is my real name. Yes, yes, I and, know that. And my mom <laughs> was the one who named me. Yes. So there's a little story to help ease the oh. ease the, the curiosity. Okay, everybody when, relax now. We're going to hear the story behind, <laughs> behind satin. The story is when I was born, my cheeks were as soft as satin. So yes. you could just as easily have been <laughs> silk. I could have been, who knows what I could have been. <laughs> my sister's name is Meadow. Uh -huh. She was calm and peaceful like a meadow. Ah. Yeah. My brother's name is Tim. <laughs> <laughs> because. Because. He was, he looked like a Tim. <laughs> Actually, my, was he my tiny? Dad's best friend at the time was, his name was Tim. So that's where that came from. But yeah. Okay. So that's the story. Okay. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> Okay, let's get into these actual questions that have nothing to do with your name. Okay. Uh, Jane from Rhode Island asks, over your two novels, what's your favorite line you've written? Oh my goodness, that's a great question. Thank you, Jane from Rhode Island. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would have to say from Secret Need, uh, it's, it's a scene where Liz and Alex have been running through the woods all night and um, he says you know how, how are your feet doing because she basically had to run on the fly with like slipper, nothing but slippers on her feet uh -huh. and she was like in serious need of a pedicure sure and he and he says you know oh like I never would have thought of you as the pedicure type like you always seemed a little more badass than that and she says I can be a badass and like pedicures, like, <laughs> <laughs> like duh, I can, be a, I can be a badass and still like pedicures, like what's wrong with you? And I just kind of like that idea, like femininity in uh -huh. general doesn't need to be hard, mm -hmm. like you you can be a badass and be feminine, and and I just think it kind of encapsulates that whole concept in that, in that line. So, okay, Yeah. nice, that's an excellent line, that's a very good choice. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Sammy, also from Rhode Island, asks, do you think men can write romance as skillfully as women can? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, I, I actually, there's been this kind of stigma surrounding romance for a really long time. Um, you know, if you write romance, I've had this happen, like even to my face, you know, where they're like, oh, you write romance, you know, like <laughs> sneer. <laughs> I prefer literary works you know? 
I know who that is, by the way. <laughs> oh, it's, there's, there's <laughs> quite a few of them. All right. Well, I know but, one of those people. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and, and, you know, people will always say, well, like, romance is so formulaic. It's fluff. It's a guilty pleasure. It's all these different things. And I think that really stems from the fact that it's predominantly woman-based. Mm -hmm. It's predominantly women telling stories for women about women. Mm -hmm. um, and, and those stories have heroines who have you know, goals that they've set that they're, that they're pursuing, actively pursuing. They're not, um, you know, kind of not, they're not settling for something less. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of that stigma is stemming from the fact that it's predominantly female based. And the, one of the ways to get rid of that stigma is to kind of start including men and having men read romance and having men write romance and um, I think it has kind of a dual part for that because um, certainly I feel like our society has you know a lot of toxic male um, philosophies and if you can get them to be in touch with their emotions and you can get them to communicate and respond and see women as whole unto themselves you know humans unto themselves that have their own stories um, it would be it would benefit our entire society mm -hmm. so um, I, I definitely think men can write those types of stories and the other thing too is if you think about it you know you can talk to any couple walking down the street men are in relationships men are in romantic you know they get married they they have girlfriends they find love um, so you can ask them how did you get together and it's gonna be different for everybody but men are equally a part of that that conversation. Mm -hmm. So, yes, absolutely. It's a short answer to that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Kent from Massachusetts asks, since becoming an author, what's the best and worst advice you've gotten? Hmm, best and worst advice. Um, gosh, I... I've gotten so much good advice. I really have. Mm -hmm. I, I feel really lucky because when I first started this journey and started considering being a self-published author, um, the person who really inspired me originally to self-publish was Hugh Howey and his Wool series. And from there, I met um, indie authors like Susan K. Quinn and Elizabeth Hunter and L. Casey and all of these like amazing indie authors who were, who were making a go of it, you know, legitimate career out of writing. Mm -hmm. And um, and so they were talking about, um, you know, just trying to put out a professional product and not um, not losing your standards just because you're self-publishing. In fact, maybe you need to have stronger standards. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that kind of foundation was all really good advice. And, and I, I feel really lucky because I can reach out to the indie author community and ask like if I'm having a problem and I can say, I'm a little confused about this. And there's going to be somebody who's willing to share what they know. And that's why I want to share it. And that's why I want to pass it forward. And I try to be helpful on the other end because I've received so much help. Mm -hmm. As far as um, bad advice, I, I haven't really gotten a lot of bad advice. Um, I've definitely gotten people, I mean, obviously there's a stigma to romance, there's a stigma to self-publishing. Mm -hmm. And so it maybe it's not advice, but certainly headwind, I want to say, um, that you have to kind of, um, you have to know what you want and you have to know who you are. And um, I don't feel the need to be validated by one of the big five traditional publishing routes. Uh -huh. um, but I know a lot of people do. And I think that's fine for them, but that's not what I need. But I have to know that that's what, not what I need. Right. You know, so um, you have to be, kind of be confident in the path that you're walking, mm -hmm. you know. One regret that I have uh, that I would do over again if I could is I would wait to publish. I would make sure that I had at least two, if not three books already written so that I could publish on a little bit of a better schedule and um, take advantage of the, the interest from the first book and kind of build momentum and build that wave of, of readership. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen a couple of authors since then who published their second book and we published our first book right around, you know, they published their first book after me. Mm -hmm. And they're they're doing that, and I think, gosh, you know, if I could just go back and do that, you know, <laughs> like it's such a smart thing to do. Right. So, like if you're looking at publishing, or if you're thinking about it, and you think it's going to be a series, I would highly, highly recommend holding your manuscript.
manuscript. I know it's like this hot little potato in your so hands, hard. you know, and it's so hard. You just want to hit submit, you know. But hold it and write the turn around and write the next book and um, have a good lead before you start publishing. Okay. So. No, that makes perfect sense. I actually wish I had done that as well. Yeah. So. <laughs> lessons learned. So yeah. Lessons learned. Yes. Uh, Ogden from. Wisconsin, W-I, Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Yeah, Wisconsin. Uh, what nationality are you and what nationalities do you get mistaken for? Holy smokes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, can I just say, I'm kind of impressed that there's a question from Wisconsin because I don't know if I know anybody from Wisconsin. So Someone from Wisconsin knows you. I don't know, just ask the question. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm half Thai. Okay. My dad is full-blooded Thai, first-generation American. It okay. was my grandparents who immigrated. Uh, my I'm my mom is blonde hair, blue-eyed, Caucasian. Okay. Um, she can date her family back to like early 1700s or wow. something. So, um, which I actually pull a lot from hmm. because I I like that idea that I am the newest of Americans and the oldest of Americans. I embody both, uh -huh. and I feel like that's like the you know that's kind of the whole point of America. <laughs> I mean, I, do I dare say that now with the climate the way that it is? But like for me, like I, I love that about about my heritage. Uh -huh. um, I have been mistaken. It's very regional. I'm kind I call myself nondescript brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if I'm like, when I was up in South Dakota visiting my aunts, I, w I got mistaken for Native American. I've been mistaken for Hispanic, mm -hmm. um, Filipino. Very few people will guess that I'm Thai. Oh. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, All interesting right. question. Yes. <laughs> I actually, I think, it, I, I think back to when I first met you and I think I thought Native American first. Yes. So, yes. I'm just one of the... And before it was, you know, taboo there. or, you know, socially unacceptable, I, I remember being a kid and dressing up like Pocahontas for, for Halloween because I had the long brown hair and uh -huh. like it totally worked. You sure. Know? Yeah. So now you can't do that really, but. <laughs> right. Right. I did it, okay. you know, when I was a kid. Nice. Yeah. I'm glad you had that opportunity <laughs> at one point in your life. And, uh. Uh, finally, Apollo 14 asks, do you take bad reviews personally? Mm, I don't, as long as it's about the book. Okay. If the bad review is personal, then yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure. I've been really lucky. <laughs> I, ha I have to say, I have been really lucky. Um, knock on wood. No, like this isn't an invitation. But um, <laughs> most of my reviews have been positive. Uh -huh. And even, I have a couple of like three-star reviews, but they're constructive. Mm -hmm. And I don't necessarily disagree with them. I mean, I... As a writer, I want my next book to be better than my my previous book. Sure. So at, for my first book, it was the best book I could write at that time. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to be the best book I ever write. Right. And I have to have faith that it's not going to be the best book I ever write. But going back and you look at those reviews, you know, some of them say, well, you know, it was good, but this or that duly noted mm -hmm. you know like that's constructive I appreciate that I appreciate that they took the time to say something mm -hmm. um, I will kind of use what I can of it into and apply it to my next book you mm -hmm. know sure but if they're saying well she was a total blah 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 well then of course <laughs> I'm gonna take that personally because you're uh, you're directing it to me not right. towards the book right so I think it depends <laughs> I want to say okay do I respond to any of them no <laughs> we <laughs> never I, respond right <laughs> <laughs> and I and I think that you know you have to expect a certain level of profession maintain a certain level of professionalism regardless of whether you're traditionally published or self-published mm -hmm. like you have to be able to step back from your product your product or your project and just once you put it out in the world it's on its own mm -hmm. you know like you release it there you go mm -hmm. it's no longer fully yours anymore right. and if you can if you can accept that you know then then you can publish. But if you can't, then you shouldn't be publishing. True. Very true. Yeah. Well said. Thank yes. You. <laughs> uh, and this is the question that I end every episode with. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a hundred years in the future. We're all dead and gone, hopefully. Mm -hmm. A young person goes into a library mm -hmm. and approaches the librarian and asks the librarian about Satin Russell. What does the librarian say about you? Um great story 
you know, she has great stories. Here, look at all of these books. (laughs) 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 We have an entire section. The library is named after her. (laughs) What can I say? I think it's a. I I think it's. um, I I hope that there are still libraries and librarians to go into. Me too. Yes. I I feel like a lot of that's going to probably be digitized and, um, Mm -hmm. you know, in the cloud somewhere. So nobody's really going to talk to anybody about it. <laughs> but, but if there's a library and a librarian, I hope that it, the library is named after me and there's an entire section dedicated to my books. That's the best answer I've ever gotten by far. No question. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Dream big. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode of Tell Me About Your Damn Book. I'd like to thank my guest, Satin Russell. The book is Secret Need. Go and get it. It's available on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So thank you for joining us and cheers.